Hello, everyone. Uh, all right, let me come here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, it's such an honor to be here. Uh, uh, thank you to Steffi and the entire DOD team for having me here. Um, I'm going to start with a story of where I'm from. My name is Tunde Onokoya. I'm a master of chess. But more importantly, I'm a teacher. I was born in a small place in Lagos, Nigeria, called Ikorodu, a really small place, a slum community. 19 years ago, I was 10, and I had just completed my primary school education. There was no money to go to school anymore, so my parents told me, you know what, you'd have to stop going to school and do something to support the family. So I had to drop out of school at the age of 10. So I was out of school for two years, and in those two years, something happened. I found the gift of chess in a very unlikely place. I found the gift of chess at a barber shop, a local barber shop, where we would just go and sit and just watch him play. And I asked him the first time I ever saw a chess board. It was love at first sight. And I asked him, what does this do? What does this mean? And he held up the night piece the one that looks like a horsey. And I said, what does this look like? And I said, oh, that's a donkey. And he laughed and he said, no, it's not a donkey. It's a knight. And that was the first time um, I got introduced to the world of chess. And it was one that I was deeply fascinated by. For a 10-year-old kid who had very little education and exposure and couldn't speak any English word, it was important that I had found something that was going to become my intellectual identity. I didn't know it at the time, but finding chess gave me something. It gave me an identity, an intellectual one. And it made me believe that I could also be intellectually inclined. And it made me believe that I could also be a thinker. And that is my title for today's speech, raising a new generation of thinkers. And I got to learn how to play chess, and because I was so good at it, I went on to school, I go back to school on a scholarship, because I could represent my school at tournaments now. And I went into college on a full-ride scholarship as well, because I represented my school at chess tournaments. And I won a couple of chess tournaments, and I got my written, and I got my title. And chess changed my life. It gave me a way to see the world beyond the confines of the environment in which I grew up. And that was the gift of chess to me as a child from the slums of Ikorodu, that through just this game, I could find my place in the world again. But the sad reality is there are over 20 million children in Africa, in Nigeria, without access to education, without a place in the world. I was lucky because I found chess, because it gave me a sense of belonging. It gave me a place to know that in a world where there's very little room for people like me. I could carve a space for myself. And that set my life on a much different trajectory. So five years ago, I made a decision to do the same thing for other children like me. So I went back to the same community where I grew up in the slums of Ikorodu, and I gathered about 10 children together with no education that couldn't even speak basic English. And I thought to myself, what if I could teach them chess as well? What if they could excel at it and become champions? Society's perception of them would change because if a child without any education could show aptitude for chess in all its complexities, people would listen to them and people would wonder if they could do this with chess. Imagine if we give them access to education or to technology, we'd be astounded by what they could do with it. So for me, I had faith in this idea that chess could give a child from the slums and poverty an intellectual identity. And I, put, I picked up a chess board and I put it in front of them. And I remember they looked at me with curiosity and just wondered what the species were. And I picked up the night piece and I asked them, what does this look like? And someone said, a donkey. And that was a deja vu moment. And 
It's been a beautiful journey of five years. And I could tell you that the first class I had with the children, it made me understand something. It made me understand this one thing on such a deep level that kept me going through the years. It gave me the passion and the conviction that I needed to do this work. And what I saw on that day was potential. But potential is nothing if it's not realized. And that is the story of Africa. That is the story of Nigeria, where I come from. A land with so much potential, with so much human capital, that hasn't come to the full realization of what it can become. And I started explaining complex ideas to children without an education. Board coordinates, algebraic notation, opening strategy. And in just one day, they were able to learn all of these complex concepts without speaking a word of English. And that was when it dawned on me that these children have incredible potential. But that potential is nothing if we don't help them realize it. So chess became a way for me to take them from zero to one by showing that they could also become thinkers. And when you give them the gift of thinking, no one could ever take that away from them. And in these five years, we've gone on to teach over 10,000 children across 10 countries in Africa. And a lot of these children have gotten life-changing opportunities. We've been able to support about 1,000 children to school on a full ride scholarship. One of them is currently in a university. And a lot of them have gone on to win both local and international tournaments. And it all started with an idea to raise a new generation of thinkers. But I'm going to narrow it down to just one child. And this is one of my favorite stories to tell. Yeah, that's me. Next. <laughs> so, um, two years ago, I met this kid. His name is Ferdinand. And I met him in a community called Makoko. Makoko is a community in Lagos, Nigeria. It is the largest floating slum in the world. It's a place where um, most people there are fishermen and they live on these wooden stilts on sewage water. It's a really bad situation. But then, again, the slum is just a place. It doesn't define the people that live there. So we decided to stage an intervention for this community because we believe that beyond what it looks like, we can tell a new story of becoming through chess. And we set up a center, and Ferdinand was one of those kids that walked into that center. Now, Ferdinand is a differently able child that lives with cerebral palsy. He doesn't speak, he doesn't walk, and he was constantly being bullied by the other children in the community that did not understand his ability. And when he walked into the academy, the other kids chased him away and said, no, you can't be here because he doesn't speak. He had never been to school before. And we asked him to stay, and we started teaching him. And Ferdinand learned how to play chess. In very little time, we realized that he was a gifted child. And not only was he good at chess, he had such a sound mind that he calculated a lot of complexities. And chess became his first language. It became the first way that he could interact with the world. And we had a tournament after the training in the community. And guess who won that tournament? Ferdinand won that tournament. Now, Ferdinand is 11 years old. He's a kid um, with a beautiful mind. Now he goes to school, and he's preparing for a tournament later in Spain this year. He's an amazing kid. And I highlighted the story because I wanted to bring the crisis closer to us. Africa is the future workforce of the world. And the world is constantly evolving. Software is eating the world. And this world is changing rapidly. But guess what? There are still millions of children, millions of people without access to the internet. 
without access to education. All of us were here looking prim and proper because we've had the privilege of education. But in Nigeria, 20 million of those children do not have access to education. And in a world that is constantly evolving, they will not have a place in that world because they wouldn't fit in. They will become a liability to that future. And there's no future that is worth dreaming of if it doesn't include all of them, including the children in the slums, including children like Ferdinand. This is why I have a vision to give the gift of chess to a million children across Africa. And I say this because if we can give a million children the gift of chess, why not just giving them a board game by giving them the gift of critical thinking, by giving them the gift of lifelong learning, by giving them the gift of an intellectual identity, and most importantly, by giving them a sense of belonging to a global community, to a place where the skills that they have that defines what opportunities that they can get. And if we give a million children the gift of chess, we can build critical mass. A million children from the slums, from poverty, that go on to get good education, that go on to build technological solutions, that go on to become chess masters, would have a sense of duty to their own community as well. And they will go back and solve the same problems for millions of other children like them, just as I have done from the slums of Ikorodu to the DLD conference. And this is my vision for Africa, that we can do great things from a small place, using chess as a tool. Chess is a game that builds cognition. The science of it says it helps instill you know, the right skills that we need for the future of work, critical thinking, creativity, communication. That is what science says. And this is true. And this is correct, because the real magic of the work that we're doing is in the synapses. How it helps children begin to learn to become thinkers. And that is what education really is. Beyond the, beyond the four walls of a classroom, education is the capacity for thought, for critical thought, for independent thinking, and for problem solving. Africa has a lot of problems. Nigeria has a lot of problems. I'm playing my part by using the talents that I have through chess and by using it as a way to help children find a place in the world again. And I say this for all of us. Africa's story is one of becoming. Our problems are easily amplified in the media, but that is not the only story. That is not the single story of Africa. The story of Africa is that of becoming, and the custodians of that story of that future are those children, children like Ferdinand, the 20 million children out of school, the several millions of children that do not have access to the internet or do not know the opportunities that exist in that universe, in those financial markets. So it is entirely up to us in all our privilege to become conduits for all of them that whatever privilege that we have at the intersection of that and another person's oppression, we find true opportunities to make change. And I'm leaving this charge with all of us. For me, it's chess. For you, it might be AI, it might be technology, right? There's no future worth dreaming of that doesn't include all of them. So in whatever capacity that we have, let us make sure to contribute to the development, to the growth of the ones who share a greater burden than we do. And I'll leave this with this final statement. If you walked into a building and you saw a child drowning, what would, you, what would be your immediate reaction? You would try to pull them out of it. Would it matter if that child is yours? Maybe not, definitely not. Would it matter if that child was African? No. Would it matter if that child doesn't speak your language? No. Your first instinct is to save that child. But guess what? There are millions of children across Africa that are drowning in a place where they will never get an opportunity or a place in the world. And it's our collective responsibility to pull them out and show them a world where they can become 
custodians of their own future, where they can have the right skills, have the right ability, and have the right knowledge and the right opportunities to contribute meaningfully to our society. As the world continues to evolve, the world is getting smaller. Software is making all of us become just one people, right? And let us strive again to give the children a chance to become just like we have. And this is our story, to do great things from a small place. And I want all of us to chorus this together. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, so one, two, ready, go. It is possible to do great things from a small place. Let's take that, take that again. One, two, ready, go. It is possible to do great things from a small place. Thank you very much.